Hey, welcome to a new video. India is a beautiful and mysterious country that attracts tourists with its unique culture. In today's video, we talk about things about ancient India that you didn't know. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Twenty-five, Pimbetka Rock Shelters. Pimbetka Rock Shelters, located in Madhya Pradesh, India, are a UNESCO World Heritage Site with a rich historical significance. The name Pimbetka is thought to mean Bhima's resting place, referring to Bhima, one of the five Pandava brothers from Indian mythology, who is believed to have interacted with locals during his exile. This archaeological site spans various periods including the Paleolithic and Mesolithic eras, showcasing India's earliest human habitation dating back over 100,000 years. It consists of seven hills and over 750 rock shelters, providing valuable insights into the transition from hunter-gatherer societies to agricultural communities. Bimbetka is renowned for its prehistoric cave paintings, some dating to around 10,000 BC, making them the oldest known rock art in India. These paintings depict scenes of animals, early dances, hunting, and even warriors on horseback, possibly from the Bronze Age. Located in the Vindian Mountains foothills, these natural rock shelters offer a unique glimpse into the cultural evolution and spiritual expressions of their ancient inhabitants. 24. Sisupalgar, the Lost City Sisupalgar, also known as Sisupalagada, is an ancient archaeological site located near Bhubaneswar, the capital of Odisha, India. It is believed to have served as the capital of ancient Kalinga and is associated with historical figures such as Karavela and Ashoka. This site is renowned for its well-preserved fortifications, making it one of India's largest and best-preserved early historic fortifications. Archaeological evidence suggests that Sisupalgar's origins date back to the 7th to 6th centuries BC, preceding the Mauryan Empire. Recent findings propose that this fortified city thrived from around the 5th century BC and may have endured beyond the 4th century AD. The city's population is estimated to have ranged from 20,000 to 25,000 inhabitants, a significant figure for its time. While the population of classical Athens was approximately 30,000, Sisupalgar's size and architectural layout underscore its historical importance. Built as a perfect square with defensive walls, Sisupalgar's archaeological remains provide valuable insights into ancient urban planning and cultural evolution. Its significance lies in its well-preserved state, which has enabled researchers to uncover its rich history dating back over two millennia. 23. Kajuraho Temples The Kajuraho Temples, constructed during the Shandela Dynasty's zenith between 950 and 1050, are a remarkable architectural and artistic achievement. Today, only around 25 temples remain, showcasing the convergence of Hinduism and Jainism. These temples are categorized into three groups and are renowned for their harmonious blend of architecture and sculpture. Among these temples, the Kandariya Temple stands out with its profusion of sculptures, considered some of India's greatest artistic masterpieces. The Kajuraho group of monuments spans 2.3 square miles, 6 square kilometers, and consists of 25 temples, including one partially excavated structure. These temples are prime examples of Nagara-style temple architecture. The sculptures adorning these temples depict a wide range of themes, from sacred and secular to social and amorous. They reflect the belief system of the time and capture the warmth of human emotions with finesse. The Kajuraho temples are not only architectural marvels, but also windows into the culture and artistry of their era. 22. Mora Muradu Mora Muradu encompasses three main elements, the primary stupa, a votive stupa, and the monastery, all of which were designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 1980. The monastery complex consists of a west-facing stupa and an eastern monastery nestled between two hill spurs. The 27 cells within the monastery featured plastered walls and possibly accommodated revered teachers or monks, some of whose stupas remain. Notably, one stupa is 14 feet, 4 meters tall, and displays traces of ancient painting. 
the central court of the monastery housed various facilities, including a bathroom, assembly hall, well, kitchen, refectory, and latrine. The sturdy construction of the walls suggests the possibility of multiple floors, and the storeroom's robust walls hint at a potential tower above it. 21. Ancient City of Pataliputra Ancient Pataliputra, located near modern-day Patna, India, was originally established by Magadha ruler Ajitashatru in 490 BC as a small fort called Pataligrama, situated close to the Ganges River. Later, under the rule of Udayin, it evolved into a significant city due to its strategic location at the confluence of the Sun and Ganges rivers. This central position prompted several major Indian empires, including the Maurya, Gupta, and Pala empires to choose Pataliputra as their capital. During the Mauryan period, Pataliputra grew to become one of the world's largest cities and exhibited an advanced system of local self-government, as noted by the Greek historian Megasthenes. Its precise location was rediscovered in modern times in 1892 by Lawrence Waddell, and extensive archaeological excavations have been conducted around modern Patna. While early Jain and Buddhist texts mention Pataliputra, it does not appear in earlier written sources. Urban development in the area likely began around the 3rd or 4th century BC. Megasthenes, a Greek historian, mentioned Pataliputra in 303 BC, and other historical accounts indicate a connection between the city's ruler and the Greeks. 20. Indus Valley Seal Script Indus script, also known as the Harappan script, comprises symbols left by the Indus Valley civilization. These inscriptions are typically quite short, making it challenging to determine if they constitute a writing system for the unknown language of that civilization. Despite numerous attempts, the script remains undisciplined, but research continues. The absence of bilingual inscriptions and the script's stability over time pose additional challenges. Syntax variations exist based on location. The first recorded seal with Harappan symbols dates back to 1875, documented by Alexander Cunningham. By 1992, over 4,000 inscribed objects had been found, some as far as Mesopotamia, indicating ancient Indus-Mesopotamia connections and featuring more than 400 distinct signs. Renowned scholars suggest a possible connection between the Brahmi script and the Indus system. British archaeologist and Indologist Raymond Alchin cautiously supports the idea of Brahmi script influence from the Indus script. Another perspective links the Indus tradition to megalithic culture, graffiti symbols in southern and central India, possibly not a linguistic script, but with some overlap. 19. Kumbhalgar Wall Kumbhalgar Fort nestled amidst Rajasthan's Aravalli range, holds a significant place in Rajput history as the birthplace of Maharana Pratap. Notably, it boasts the second longest wall globally, stretching 22 miles, 36 kilometers, with only the Great Wall of China surpassing it. Constructed in the 15th century, this fortress resisted numerous sieges, only succumbing to a Mughal capture through a deceitful poisoning of its water supply. The fort features seven imposing gates known as poles, safeguarding its entrances. The robust rounded bastions exemplify Rajput strength. The internal ramp leading to the hilltop is intentionally winding, hindering enemy elephants and horses. Cleverly devised traps add an element of surprise. Kumbhalgar Fort, still relatively undiscovered by tourists, offers a wealth of attractions. It encompasses essential structures like Kumbha Palace, Badal Mahal, Maharana Pratap's birthplace, and a variety of Brahmanical and Jain temples. Among these, the Nilkanth Mahadev Temple is particularly revered. Dedicated to Lord Shiva, it showcases remarkable architecture, including a large dome, intricately carved ceilings, 24 pillars, a spacious courtyard, and a 5 feet 1.5 meters high lingam, making it an architectural marvel. 18. Aryabhata's Contributions The date of birth of Aryabhata, the renowned Indian mathematician and astronomer, is still a subject of debate among scholars. Some say he was born in 476 AD. What is known is that he mentioned his age in his book Aryabhatiya, 
stating that he was 23 years old when writing it. His birthplace is believed to be Kusumapura or Patliputra, present-day Patna, Bihar, as indicated in his book. Most of his significant works were found in Kusumapura, where he likely completed his studies. During Aryabhata's time, Kusumapura and Ujjain were the two major mathematical centers. While some theories suggest he may have been the head of Nalanda University, there is no conclusive evidence. Aryabhatiya is Aryabhata's sole surviving work, consisting of 118 verses. It covers various topics, including cosmology, mathematics, planetary models, and spheres and eclipses. Aryabhata made notable contributions to mathematics and astronomy, presenting a geocentric model of the universe and predicting solar and lunar eclipses. He explained that the westward motion of stars is due to the Earth's rotation on its axis. Aryabhata's contributions to mathematics include the invention of zero and the concept of place value. His works encompass trigonometry, algebra, approximation of P, and indeterminate equations. 17. Harappan Sewage System The Harappan civilization, located in present-day eastern Pakistan and northern India, was known for its advanced infrastructure and early innovations in water supply and sanitation. Most of the homes in the Indus Valley were constructed using mud, dried mud bricks, or standardized clay bricks. In urban areas like Mohenjo-Daro, many buildings had multiple stories, showcasing their architectural sophistication. One remarkable feature was the well-structured drainage system designed to efficiently dispose of waste materials outside the city. In these courtyard houses, residents had both a designated washing platform and a dedicated toilet with a waste disposal hole. Flushing the toilet involved pouring water from a central well through a clay brick pipe into a shared drain, which then led to a nearby soak pit, cesspit. Periodically, the soak pits were emptied of solid waste, possibly for use as fertilizer. Most houses also had private wells, and city walls served as flood barriers. 16. Edakal Caves Edakal Caves, situated in the Wayanad district of Kerala, India, are two natural caves perched at an altitude of 3,940 feet, 1,200 meters, above sea level on Ambakuthi Mala, a mountain along an ancient trade route connecting the high Mysore mountains to the Malabar coast ports. These caves hold a remarkable treasure, pictorial inscriptions believed to date back to at least 6,000 BC, created by Neolithic inhabitants. These carvings shed light on the presence of a prehistoric settlement in this region. The petroglyphs inside depict various human and animal figures, tools, and enigmatic symbols yet to be deciphered. These carvings, of at least three different types, offer insights into life over 8,000 years ago, suggesting multiple periods of habitation. The cave's historical and anthropological significance was recognized by Fred Fawcett, a former Malabar state police official, who discovered them in 1890, subsequently drawing the attention of scholars. 15. Brihadiswara Temple Brihadiswara Temple, also known as Peruvu Dayar Kovil, is a prominent Hindu temple situated in Thanjavur, Tamil Nadu, India. It's renowned for its architectural grandeur and is a significant example of Dravidian architecture from the Chola period. Emperor Raja, Raja Chola I, initiated its construction and the temple was completed in 1010 AD, marking its 1000th anniversary in 2010. This temple is part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. The temple boasts impressive features, including towering fortified walls that might have been added in the 16th century. Its Vimanam, temple tower, stands 216 feet, 66 meters tall, making it the world's tallest of its kind. Remarkably, the Kumbam, the apex of the temple, is carved from a single rock and weighs around 80 tons, 73 tons. At the entrance, there's a massive statue of Nandi, sacred bull, also carved from a single rock, measuring 16 feet, 5 meters in length, and 13 feet, 4 meters in height. 14. Harappan Dancing Girl The sculpture known as the Dancing Girl hails from the ancient Indus Valley civilization, specifically from the city of Mohenjo-Daro in what is now modern-day Pakistan. 
Crafted through the lost wax casting technique around 2300 to 1750 BC, this bronze masterpiece stands at a petite 4.1 inches, 10.5 centimeters, in height. It portrays a confident and naturalistic image of a young nude woman or girl adorned with stylized ornaments. Today, it resides in the National Museum in New Delhi, India, as part of the country's heritage since the partition of India in 1947. This figure stands out for its fluid and flexible pose, unlike many other statues of its time. Adorned with bangles, a necklace, and a distinctive hairstyle, the girl stands with one hand on her hip, her other hand resting on her thigh. Her long arms and natural posture convey a sense of rhythm and grace, leading some to speculate that she might have been a dancer. However, interpretations about her exact role in this civilization vary among experts. 13. The Ancient University of Nalanda The University of Nalanda, an ancient seat of learning in India, was a pioneering institution of higher education that predates many famous universities in the world. Founded in the 5th century AD in Bihar, it holds the distinction of being the world's first residential university. This remarkable institution had the capacity to house 10,000 students and 2,000 professors in its dormitories. Nalanda University was not confined to Indian scholars. It attracted international students from places like Korea, Japan, China, Tibet, and various parts of Asia. While Buddhism was a major focus, the curriculum extended to secular fields like arts, medicine, astronomy, mathematics, politics, and even military science. Tragically, Nalanda's decline began in 1197 when it faced destruction at the hands of Muslim invaders. Its library, renowned for its priceless knowledge, was burnt, and many scholars lost their lives. Despite this ancient institution's demise over 800 years ago, efforts were made to resurrect its spirit. In 2006, India, along with China, Singapore, Japan, and Thailand, initiated a plan to establish a new world-class residential university inspired by Nalanda's legacy. 12. Sarnath Lion Capital the Sarnath Ashoka Pillar is a remarkable archaeological find in Sarnath, India. Discovered in 1905 during excavations, this pillar was constructed by Emperor Ashoka in 250 BC. Made of Shunar sandstone, the pillar was originally located in Sarnath, a significant Buddhist site approximately 7 miles 12 kilometers from Varanasi. The Ashoka Pillar of Sarnath carries inscriptions conveying Emperor Ashoka's message against the divisions within Buddhism. The Sarnath Lion Capital is a renowned historical artifact that holds significant cultural and religious importance. It was originally the crowning feature of the column. This beautifully carved capital features four life-sized lions positioned back to back atop a drum-shaped abacus. Each side of the abacus is adorned with intricately detailed wheels, and between them, four animals, a lion, an elephant, a bull, and a galloping horse are depicted in a captivating sequence from right to left. 11. Kailasa Temple Kailasa Temple, also known as Kailashanatha Temple, is a magnificent rock-cut Hindu temple located in the Ellora Caves of Maharashtra, India. This temple is renowned worldwide for its remarkable architecture and sculptural beauty. Carved entirely from a massive rock cliff face, it stands as one of the most impressive cave temples globally and represents the pinnacle of Indian rock-cut architecture. What sets Kailasa Temple apart is its colossal size and intricate design. The top of the temple's superstructure rises to an impressive height of 107 feet, 32.6 meters, above the temple's lower courtyard, even though the rock face slopes downward from the rear to the front. Archaeologists believe that this architectural marvel was crafted from a single rock, making it all the more extraordinary. 10. Konark Sun Temple The Sun Temple in Konark, Odisha, is a captivating ancient wonder steeped in history and mysteries. This temple, dating back 700 years, has witnessed the ebb and flow of time, the rise and fall of kingdoms, and holds many unsolved enigmas. Its stories range from the concealed entrance secrets to tales of ghostly spirits haunting its premises for over a century. Historically, Abul Fazl, the renowned court historian of Akbar, 
attributed the construction of the Sun Temple to King Narasimha I during his reign from 1238 to 1264 AD. Despite some structural decay, this UNESCO World Heritage Site remains a popular pilgrimage site. Crafted from black granite, it's a testament to artistic brilliance and engineering excellence. Notably, its design aligns with the sunrise, and the temple's sundials still tell time accurately. The Konark Sun Temple stands as a magnificent tribute to ancient Indian architecture. 9. Great Bath of Mohenjo-Daro First built almost 5,000 years ago, the Great Bath of Mohenjo-Daro stands as a remarkable relic of the Indus Valley Civilization. Located in what is now Pakistan, this ancient city was a bustling hub of trade, culture, and commerce during the 3rd millennium BC. This monumental pool measuring 39.4 feet, 12 meters in length, 22.9 feet, 7 meters in width, and 7.9 feet, 2.4 meters in depth, was an engineering marvel of its time. Constructed with waterproofed bricks and bitumen, its purpose remains somewhat of a mystery, though it's believed to have served religious or public bathing functions. Surrounded by chambers likely designated for changing and storage, the Great Bath was supplied with water through a complex channel system. Two grand staircases, north and south facing, provided access to the pool, with a ledge running along the bath's lower end. As part of Mohenjo-Daro's citadel complex, the Great Bath endures as one of the world's oldest known public pools. 8. Ajanta Caves The Ajanta Caves, located in Maharashtra, India, are a remarkable series of 29 rock-cut Buddhist cave monuments. These ancient caves, dating from the 2nd century BC to approximately 480 AD, hold the prestigious status of being a UNESCO World Heritage Site. These caves are celebrated as true masterpieces of Buddhist religious art, featuring exquisite paintings and rock-cut sculptures that rank among the finest examples of ancient Indian art. The paintings are particularly noteworthy for their ability to convey emotions through intricate gestures, poses, and forms. The history of the Ajanta Caves spans several centuries, with the earliest cave monuments dating back to the 2nd and 1st centuries BC. During the Gupta period, in the 5th and 6th centuries AD, more caves with rich decorations were added to the original group. These caves, a blend of sanctuaries and monasteries, were strategically carved into a vertical cliff overlooking the river Waghora. 7. Padmanabhaswami Temple Treasure Padmanabhaswami Temple in Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala, stands as a testament to opulence. Webster's Dictionary's definition of rich pales in comparison to this temple, which is considered the world's wealthiest. This 8th century temple is dedicated to Lord Vishnu and houses a remarkable deity, a reclining Lord Vishnu on the serpent Anantha's hood. King Marthanda Varma orchestrated a significant renovation during his reign, resulting in the temple's present grandeur. The king and his royal lineage took on the responsibility of preserving the temple and caring for their subjects. The tradition of Tripaditanam, donations to the temple and its deity, began during this time. In 1965, the last Maharaja of Travancore, Maharaja Shrey Padmanabha Dasa Shrey Chithira Thirunal Bala Ramavarma, established the Shrey Padmanabha Swami Temple Trust to continue religious offerings and donations. In 2011, a petition led to the discovery of six underground vaults within the temple complex, named A to F. These vaults held an astonishing treasure trove, including gold coins, statues, jewelry, precious stones, and even gold thrones. 6. The world's oldest dock at Lothal The oldest known dock in the world resides in the ancient city of Lothal, located approximately 53 miles, 85 kilometers, south of Ahmedabad in Gujarat, India. Lothal, dating back at least 5,000 years, was a prominent port town of the Indus Valley Civilization, making it a significant archaeological site. This ancient dock, often mistaken for a reservoir, connected Lothal to the Sabarmati River, serving as a vital trade route between Harapan cities in Sindh, now in Pakistan, and the Saurashtra Peninsula. In ancient times, the Kuch Desert was part of the Arabian Sea, rendering Lothal's location ideal for a dock. 
measuring about 656 feet, 200 meters, in length and 114 feet, 35 meters in width, the dock would fill with seawater during high tides, facilitating the movement of ships and boats. It featured a lock with a wooden door at the outlet, maintaining a minimum water level to ensure flotation during low tides. 5. Rakigari Skeletons The skeletons of a man and a woman were unearthed in Rakigari in 2016, offering a unique glimpse into one of the world's earliest urban civilizations, the Harappan or Indus Valley culture. The Petrus bone, an area dense with DNA, has unlocked secrets from the 4,500 years old skeletons. This remarkable discovery may shed light on long-standing historical and scientific debates about India's history. The Petrus bone's exceptional DNA density has allowed researchers to extract DNA samples that could provide answers to complex questions. The pair was buried together in an intimate pose, suggesting they were a couple. However, the circumstances of their simultaneous deaths remain a mystery. Archaeologists and scientists from India and South Korea have spent years researching these skeletons, and their findings have now been published in a peer-reviewed international journal. 4. Mystical Sculptures of Unakoti Mystical sculptures hidden amidst lush forests characterize Unakoti in Tripura. Located about 110 miles, 178 kilometers from Agartala, this cultural marvel remains concealed by the Jampui Hills' abundant greenery, accessible through a medieval stone gate. Unakoti's name, meaning less than a crore, stems from a fascinating legend involving Lord Shiva and his divine companions, numbering close to a crore, 10 million. Upon awakening, only Lord Shiva rose while others slept. In his wrath, Shiva turned them into stone, creating a multitude of rock carvings and sculptures on the hillside. Another myth speaks of a skilled craftsman, Kalu Kumhar, who wished to accompany goddess Parvati, Lord Shiva, and their followers to Mat Kailash. To please Lord Shiva, Parvati suggested he craft a million stone statues of Shiva and devotees in a single night. While he fell short by one statue, Unakoti became a significant Hindu pilgrimage site. Today, it remains an overlooked treasure, adorned with stunning sculptures of Hindu deities and figures waiting to be explored amid the lost hill of faces. 3. The Iron Pillar The Iron Pillar of Delhi, a 1600-year-old marvel of metalwork, stands tall at the Kutba complex in Mirauli, Delhi. Built during the reign of Chandragupta II in the Gupta Empire, this iron structure reaches a height of 23.6 feet, 7.21 meters, and has a 16 inches, 41 centimeters diameter. What sets it apart is its astonishing resistance to rust. For many years, scientists and metal workers were puzzled by the pillar's rust-resistant nature. Some speculated that it was crafted from an otherworldly metal, while others believed it involved a lost advanced technique. However, in 2003, the mystery was unraveled. Metallurgists from Kanpur IIT discovered that the pillar's unique property stemmed from a protective layer called Missa White, an iron oxyhydroxide rich in phosphorus that forms a barrier between the metal and rust. 2. Amaravati Stupa Amaravati Stupa, one of India's largest stupas, faced a disheartening fate as it was systematically dismantled and transported to Britain during the colonial era. Amidst ongoing debates surrounding the return of the Kohinoor diamond to India, the significance of reclaiming this precious gem remains questionable. While the symbolic gesture of reclaiming the Kohinoor may provide some satisfaction, a more pragmatic approach could be seeking the return of numerous historical artifacts and objects that were taken from India during the 300 years of British colonial rule. These items, now proudly displayed in British museums as war spoils, hold immense historical and cultural value for India. Repatriating these pieces of history would not only enrich India's heritage, but also facilitate cost-effective historical research. Many such artifacts, like the Sultan Ganj Buddha, a 1,100-pound, 500-kilogram, Indian metal sculpture, and various Chola bronzes and Buddhist sculptures currently reside in British museums away from their rightful home. 1. Pashupati Seal 
The Pashupati seal, sometimes referred to as the Mahayogi seal or Proto-Shiva seal, is a significant artifact discovered in Mohenjo-Daro, Pakistan, dating back to around 2500 to 2400 BC during the Indus Valley Civilization. This steatite seal holds a distinctive place among thousands of seals found in the region due to its intricate design and the presence of a prominent human figure, which is unusual in such seals. The seal portrays a seated figure, often suggested to be a tricephalic deity, potentially connected to Lord Shiva or a proto-Shiva figure. The central figure sits in a meditative posture similar to yoga, adorned with what appear to be bangles and intricate ornaments. Notably, the headdress consists of two upward-curving horns and unique facial features. Surrounding the central figure are various animals, including deer, tiger, buffalo, rhinoceros, and elephant. Additionally, inscriptions in the Indus Valley script adorn the top edge of the seal, though their meaning remains undeciphered. Have you ever visited India? Let us know in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like to see more videos that we made, click on one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.